Welcome to the last set of news. My name is Rob, and today, instead of talking about the news, I want to talk to you about a couple of different indicators to help you uh, take a look at what would be considered a top or a bottom as far as the market goes. And we're going to go over a lot of different things, so let's just jump right in. The first thing I want to talk about is just a quick overview, and I don't want you to forget these words of wisdom. And really what it comes down to is this, is that as far as market tops and bottoms, you can never call them perfectly. No one ever does. And someone, some people might get lucky and say, well, I did it a couple of times, but you know, sometimes people call a top every single month. So it really just depends. Really want, what I want you to remember is this. This is from Nathan Rothschild, one of the richest families on the planet. And he says it very accurately. Fortunes are made by buying low or as low as you can and selling too soon because it's not about selling the absolute tip, tip, tippy top of the market. It's about getting as close as you possibly can. Another piece of, in of information is from Warren Buffett. Investing is about time in the market, not timing the market. The majority of gains are made in a few days, so don't miss them. And that's one of my fears, too. When I, when I think about the market cycles, I mean, we'll wait so long for these cycles to play out. Did I just miss another 10x, another 50x or 100x? Or should I actually sell at this point? These are the things that I worry about and probably you too, not for sure. And then also, uh, you have to remember this. It's all about making a plan and sticking to that plan. This is from the Daily Stoic, and it talks about a story of uh, Chef Kwame on Wok. He started his own uh, catering business. He asked his mom for advice, and his mom said this, always trust the prep list. Uh, you've made it in your sanest moment, so trust that that list that you created because when you get in the kitchen, you start working, you'll be crazy. And it's the same exact thing as far as the markets. When we get into the markets, we get a little bit of a FOMO. We get a little bit of fear. We get a little bit of greed. And before you know it, the plan that we laid out isn't the plan that we follow. And that's the problem with when you invest, you ride things sometimes all the way up and then you ride it all the way back down because you're like, no, 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 it's going to go, it's going to go higher. And I just got to wait a little bit. And sometimes it's better to have a plan of action and move in that direction. And that'll lead me to my next point, which is this. I believe that we are on a four-year cycles. I believe that uh, the four-year cycles are still intact. And uh, it's been happening like this. 2012, we had a Bitcoin halving. And then, of course, we had an all-time high from five bucks to a thousand dollars. That was from 2012, 2013. Then things get overheated and they fall down. There's a dip and a reset. Same thing happened in 2016, 17 when I got in. You had a Bitcoin halving and you had an all-time high. And of course, things get overheated. There's a dip and a reset, and then things go down way too low. Then we're in this channel, and this was the last one we were in. 2020, we have Bitcoin halving. That happened all-time high. We hit that. And in 2022 and three, we're having a dip and a reset. And I thought that when I made my plan, which there's a video you can watch about uh, what I made two years ago as far as the plan of what I would actually do, and I actually had an exit strategy of where I thought the prices would go. And some worked out pretty well and some didn't. But as time moved on, I thought, no, 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 that it's going to keep going up because maybe there's some uh, extended cycle theories. Maybe we're going to go from 67000 to 150000 like everybody talked about. But it wasn't the case. And if I just would have looked at the data and stuck to my plan and sold when I was supposed to, I'd be in a much better position. Now, I did okay. I mean, like uh, for Ethereum, I thought I'd go to 10,000. That didn't happen, but I was able to sell at 2,000 and, and some other points. Chainlink, I thought it would go to $35. It did. And Bitcoin, I missed it, 150,000. And some other ones that I missed, you can watch that video in your leisure. So that's really what it comes down to. So what I want to do this, this run is just take a look at some, some indicators. And there's seven I want to talk to you about. There's top callers, Pi Cycle Top, NUPL, Time and Risk. And there's some bottom ones, MVRV, Two Year, Puel, and Reserve. And I can just tell you that uh, with each of these, they're mostly all on uh, a website called Look Into Bitcoin. Now, you can go to this website and you can see all these indicators for free. Uh, they're all free except for Ben's. Uh, time and risk factor, which I think is still important. But if you wanted to do that, they're all free. Now, if you want to sign up for their indicators, like I just got this one uh, couple, uh, yesterday or so, uh, August 2nd, it's like August 3rd or 4th, something like that. You can see that uh, it'll say, tell you, hey, look, this MVRV score, score, it's entering in the oversold zone. Maybe this is a good time to accumulate. It'll tell you exactly what it is. Now, you don't have to. I think it's like 50 or 20 bucks a month but that's just for me. Again, you don't have to. So what I want to do 
is I want to take a look and start with the pi cycle top and just move forward from there. So let's take a look at the pi cycle top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each one of these indicators and just give you a brief overview to make it as simple as possible. Then we'll come back and, and break them down into detail. So really what this comes down to is that there's two lines here. Well, there's actually three. There's the price of Bitcoin in black. There is the 111 day moving average, which is uh, this one in like orange or yellow. Then there's the green one, the 350 day, 350 day moving average times two. Just to take, just to zoom in real quick, once the green line, the 350 day moving average falls or crosses over the 111 day moving average. That is the indicator of a potential top. And it's what it's saying is that, hey, in 2013, the top was roughly $1,000.90. Well, it wasn't, it was 1,184, but pretty good. Again, we don't care so much about timing the absolute top. It's all about just getting to where we want it to be as far as around. So again, if we take a look at it retroactively, because this was created in 2019, we can see that it was close a little bit on here and in here, but as these fall under, again, as the 111 day moving average goes over the 350 moving average, that means a top happens in 2017 over here. So what you wanna do is just take a look at this and go, when is this crossing over? Okay, about right here that might be considered a top and then go from there. Again, as they, as they start to get closer, that's what you wanna look for. And that is the pie cycle top. Now, if we take a look at the net unrealized profit loss, very simple. Everything gets more simple than from here. Anything in the green, not a bad time to accumulate. Anything in the orangey red area, not a bad time to sell. Things are getting overheated. If we take a look at the time and risk bands, and this of course is uh, Ben's pay site, if you just take a look at uh, on 0, 0.0 to 0 0.1, uh, this is like when it could be considered a, a top or excuse me, a bottom during this time, might be a good idea to accumulate. And then over here, when it's like super high, 0 0.9 to 1.0, that's a good time to actually sell. And you can break this down by different market cycles. And uh, we'll go over that in a little bit. And those are the top indicators. Now the bottom indicators, you can kind of use them as, as, as top if you want to, but I see these as better bottom indicators. One of the first one is MVRV when it's in the greenish area, not a bad time to probably accumulate. It's happened here, happened here, happened here. Now on the red, you can look at this and go, yeah, it's not a bad time to uh, actually sell, but uh, I see this as more of a bottom indicator. Also uh, the two year MA multiplier, once you, get the price of Bitcoin going into this, this uh, reddish area. And then that'd be a good time to probably sell. And over in the green area, probably a good time to accumulate, especially as it goes in this. So again, reds and blue, reds and, and greens, sell, buy. And that's about it. Poil multiple, same thing here. Once it's in this green band, probably not a bad idea to accumulate. And then the reserve risk price, see it here in, in the green probably not a bad idea to accumulate here. So again, this is just us going over uh, things in detail. Let's jump back and, and really, really break this down as far as the Pi cycle top. Uh, you, can, you can find this again at looking to Bitcoin and this is a retro tool. So the question then is, well, Rob, how does this actually work? How do they get this data? Well, this is how it is. Uh, indicator overview, the Pi cycle top indicators historically been effective in picking out the timing of the market cycle highs to within three days. That's pretty good. It uses the 111 day moving average and newly created 350 day moving average times two. And then uh, just so you know, the date it was created was April, 2019. So when people talk about the pie cycle top and how accurate it is, it's actually looked back uh, from around right here to call the tops. And then moving forward from 2019 all the way here, it didn't accurately hit the tops, but just like we talked about with Baron Rothschild, it's not about hitting the tops. It's about getting as close as you possibly can and then getting taking your profits and uh, going your merry little way. So the thing with this one that I wanna make sure is everybody knows is, is this. If we take a look back retroactively, we can see that these little markers here, uh, this was in 2011, and it didn't really mark the top too well. But again, there wasn't that much data because, I mean, Bitcoin has been around since uh, 2009 or so, so uh, not too much. But if we take a look at this, this period here, it also had a double 
uh, all-time highs or double tops, as you want to call them. So these are the cycles around 2013. You can see here that in April, it was around 131, and it said, okay, that is the top. But again, in 2013, super volatile, not a lot of data. And then, of course, it said it called it again and said, hey, this would be a good time to get out. And it really did, uh, in all honesty, in 2013, around 683, which you just missed it a little bit. Not too bad. So that's the first part. Then in 2017, we can take a look here that, yes, it did hit that top perfectly at 19,326. But then this is where it gets interesting. As we move forward, we can see that top that it thought it was at for the last cycle, 2020 through 2023, 2020, 2023, yeah. Uh, it said, hey, at 59, 60,000, somewhere around there, April 12th, April 11th, that's where we believe the top actually is. And uh, that wasn't true. That wasn't the absolute top. Uh, the absolute top came over here in around uh, November uh, November 10th, 11th at 67,000. So and we can see that those, the 350 day moving average times two and 111 day moving average are way far apart, but it doesn't matter because all we want to do is just hit this price point and just get it to as close as humanly possible. And that is the big thing with the Pi cycle top indicator. And what's also interesting about that is that a lot of people thought, hey, there's something uh, wrong with the Pi Cycle Top. This is uh, Ben in the Cryptoverse, and he covered this on April 11th, 2021, which again, which was pretty darn close to the top. And he states right here, he says, hey, the global top for Bitcoin was 29 days ago. And this that would have been uh, roughly March 12th or so. So unless Bitcoin goes back above 61K or so, and has a major crash within the next three days, and the cross the indicator will not come within three days of a major local top. And it did it again. But again, who cares? It doesn't have to be perfect. Just got to be pretty darn close. So that is the first one. That is uh, the Pi cycle top. And as time goes on, I think it would probably behoove a lot of us just to make sure that we are taking a look at that one. Now, that would take me to my next one, the NUPL. So the NUPL, again, it's not perfect, but it gives us an insight into where a top could potentially be. And how does this work? Well, it goes like this. Market value. Uh, the current price of Bitcoin multiplied by the number of coins in circulation and realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved, adds up all these individual prices and takes an average of them. So you subtract realized value from market value and you get unrealized profit and loss. And there's some more information down here, but I think it's that big of a deal. All you gotta know is this. See down here? When these red lines go down, that's capitulation. And you can see how far down it goes. It's quite quite drastic. But again, not a lot of data. 2011 wasn't a lot of time. But as we move closer, it gets a little bit more accurate. The thing is with this one, again, is it did not accurately depict the absolute top. Now, retroactively, uh, it said, yeah, around, actually, let's take a look in 2017. So in 2017, it went up to this belief denial phase, which is like the top that it could be. And it said, yeah, this is probably the top. Now, is that here or could it have gone up here? Sure. But again, it's not about timing everything perfectly. Then, then over here in our last cycle, here's what we got. It briefly just almost touched into that upper band, into this pinkish area. And this would have been what they would have considered as the top because over here again when the top was supposed to be in november or so when it was sixty-seven thousand, this band wasn't even close but if you took profits anywhere along here you would have been a lot better than just holding on and it's going nope it'll go up no it'll go up because today uh it is august 4th 5th somewhere around there i forgot but uh, you're looking at a Bitcoin price of around $24,000. So would you rather have sold when, I don't know, Bitcoin was at uh, 56,000 or 24,000, or maybe even over here when it was at, uh, well, again, 50, 58,000 or 61,000. It doesn't really matter. It's just about getting to the closeness. And that will lead me to my next point, the cycle top collar three, which is uh, time and risk bands. Again, when we take a look at these, it's just good to take 
all of them together and go, okay, I've taken a look at Pi Cycle Top, I'm taking a look at NUPL, and I'm also taking a look at the time and risk bands to see, hey, this could be the time when it's close to the top. Now, this again is from Ben's website, Into the Cryptoverse. There's a link in the description, or if you're watching on Dan Teacher's Crypt, it'll be below this video itself. And what's interesting is that you can take a look at the different time periods as far as market cycle. Market cycles one, two, three, and four, which is current. And the way that Ben lays it out is like this. Market cycle one is a time in the bottom as far as Bitcoin in 2010. Market cycle two is a time of bottom uh, two with Bitcoin in 2011. Market cycle three, time of bottom in 2015. And market cycle four is uh, in 2018. But what's interesting to note is that you see these, these wristbands here. This is where it is what might be considered like the bottom bottom, 0 0.00.1. There's no days in this last current cycle as, it, as uh, it's been noted here. In the last cycle, cycle three, you had seven days. In cycle two, you had so many days, gosh, 29 days. And in cycle one, you had a lot of days where, where there was pretty much the bottom. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the tops. So if I take a look here and we just take a look at, let's just put all the data in. As you can see that the bottoms, there's only 130 days in that whole time. But the tops, there's only 18 days. If we take a look at one, there's zero days. Take a look at two, there's three days. And over here is 17 days. And the third one, very slight, 12 and 15 days. And for the current one, it's even less. It's three days and 45, which is exactly what we just talked about in the beginning. The majority of gains is made in a few days, so don't miss them. The big thing I want you to remember here is that's why we take all these different indicators and just think to ourselves, which is the best one? Now, I can't show you the, the graph, which is the historic risk levels, which will tell you the exact days, because this is a paid website. So if you would like to use all three of them, look into Bitcoin is free. This third one is optional, but I think it would behoove you to actually take a look at this from time to time. And that's where we get for the cycle uh, tops. So now let's switch gears a little bit and we'll talk about the bottoms. So we're in 2022. We may have hit the bottoms, we may have not. Again, all these different ones I'm talking about, you can find those on the website or you can find them, uh, links in the description. But the first I wanna talk about is MVRV. And MVRV, quite simply, and we talked about this uh, here for looking at Bitcoin, also over at CryptoQuants, just the MVRV regular score. So how is this one uh, all played out? Well, it uses three metrics. Uh, the market value, which is the blue line, current price of Bitcoin multiplied by the number of coins in circulation. The realized value or the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved, adds up all those individual price, takes an average of them. Then the Z-score pulls out the extremes in the data between market value and realized value. So really what it comes down to is this. If you take a look at the bottoms, I think we can all figure that out, which is as it goes down, this could be the bottom. Because when you take a look at this, these different graphs, like which one is the bottom bottom? Well, no one really knows. Again, it's about getting as close to possible as we possibly can. And then just go from there. So in 2012, you were looking at, uh, gosh, a market cap of 17 million. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, score was in the negatives over here. Down here, of course, uh, some pretty some pretty bottoms for just for the market. Now we go forward, take a look at 2018. We remember these times. This would have been considered the bottoms and it would have been okay. This is where I made pretty much all my money. Just dollar cost averaging right here when everything was boring. And I talk about this, of course, in the four year cycles when I'm buying when it's super boring. And then of course, as we take Look forward, uh, June 13th, roughly, was when we, let me blow this up so you can see it, was essentially when we may have bottom. Now, does that mean it can't go lower? We can go lower, of course, why not? But this is not a bad time to accumulate for me. The question I always ask myself, is Bitcoin expensive right now or is it cheap? Going back to Pi Cycle Tops, when everything's going up here, is Bitcoin expensive or is it cheap? Going over here, is Bitcoin expensive or is it cheap right now? And these are the big questions that you have to ask yourself. So MVRV, very simple. Just take a look at the line itself and then just go from there. So that would take care of the MVRV score. Let's move on into our second caller, two-year MA multiplier. So this one, again, it's a, 
reasonably accurate and we can take a look forward. How does this one work? Well, it's again, it's right here. Highlights periods where buying or selling Bitcoin during these times would have produced outsized returns. It uses a moving average line to your MA and has a multiplication of that moving average times to your MA times five. Buying Bitcoin when the price drops below the two year MA green line has historically generated outsized returns. Selling Bitcoin when prices go above the two year has historically been effective for taking profit. So let's see if that actually worked out. So again, 2014, that looks about a pretty good time. When we have Bitcoin prices at 275, 305, 2000, again, 2015, 289, and so on and so forth, which if you just would have waited until 2017 and used the Pi cycle top, hey, you would have gone from $245 to roughly $20,000, so not too bad. Moving forward, again, there is this dip like we just saw in the MVRV score. This was a great time. 2018, $3,700, 3570, 3589. 4,055, again, is this cheap or is this expensive? Moving forward again, it's the same thing that we just saw with the last one. Roughly, this one went a little bit uh, a little bit shallower and it said May 8th was a pretty good time to accumulate. Maybe 34,000, 31,000. Again, this is why I'm talking about using two, three, four different indicators because in all honesty, 34,000 wasn't a great one. But if you would have waited till around June when it was 26,000, right now you'd been okay. You'd been feeling okay. Actually, June 15th, 22,575, which is exactly what it is right now. And that's why we want to use two just to verify. Moving on to the third one, well, multiple. What is this? This is again another indicator. Metric looks at the supply side of Bitcoin's economy, Bitcoin miners and the revenue. Well, multiple is calculated by dividing the daily issuance value of bitcoins by the 365 day moving average of the daily issuance value it uses the red band on the chart to show when minor revenues and usd terms are significantly higher than historical norms in this case the 365 day moving average these periods have been when the price of bitcoin has also reached its major high so the pull multiple can be a useful forecasting tool eh, debatable but again another tool to take a look at and you can just see right here as the price for miners to sell, it goes super high. Pretty good idea maybe to take a look at selling. So again, it went up super high here in 2013. Right here, it didn't hit the very top top, but again, it's not about the tops. It's just about trying to hit as close as you possibly can. So again, over here, not so great. It didn't even hit into this, this pink uh, sell zone when it was uh, April 10th, 11th which is why we like to use multiple ones. But if I took a look at this and say, wow, we're entering into this area, maybe I'm gonna wait. But then I go back and go, well, you know what? If I take a look at the Pi Cycle top, you know, this was actually a pretty good time to sell. Or the NUPL, well, actually it's in this accumulation zone that, or in this uh, sell zone. I don't think it's gonna get all the way up to here. So again, this to me is not a great um, top indicator, but as far as like a bottom indicator, that's why I put it there. I think, sure, May 24th, 2020, 9,300, 9,600, I would buy then. And then of course down here, maybe not. And then of course, if we take a look at this time frame, again, the same thing over and over again. Uh, this was, it says in June 18th would have been a good time when we had, yeah, Bitcoin at 199, Bitcoin 192, 196, 20,813. So again, not a bad time but not super accurate. And the last one I'll make mention of is the reserve risk. And reserve risk is a bottom caller. I don't like it as a top one. And uh, here's what we have. Reserve risk allows us to visualize the confidence amongst long-term Bitcoin holders relative to the price of Bitcoin at a given moment in time. When confidence is high and price is low, there's attractive risk reward. Again, it's all psychology. It's all group thinking, in my opinion. So invest in Bitcoin at that time in the green zone. When confidence is low and price is high, risk reward is unattractive and people start to take profits. Green zone has produced outside returns over time. So if we take a look at this same type of thing. We can go all the way back uh, 2014. This is actually, and this is why it's not that super accurate because it's a very long band. But you can just group this with the other three and just go, well, 200 bucks on 2015, not too bad. 245, 
367, all right. 641, that's so great. And if we kind of go forward, did it hit this one? Let's see. So yeah, it did pretty well actually. 2018, the same time I was buying Bitcoin, 4,000, 4,100, 4,166. Just longer extended frames though. Almost $6,000 up to here. But again, in hindsight, does it really matter? And then lastly, the last time period, when we want to say it, around June 13th or so, did it hit that? No. So it was saying that 40, again, 41,000 was a good time to buy. I don't think it was a good time to buy. 40, 39. And it didn't really, it was stayed in this channel for quite some time. 28,000 until down here. So again, this is, like I say, probably the least accurate indicator. And of course, I talk about those and I give them a cycle top precisions, like pi cycle top is a nine out of 10, seven out of 10 for any PL time and risk is about an eight. For the bottoms, I'll say MVRV is about a nine, T or MA is about an eight, put multiples multiple is six or seven, the reserve risk is about a five. So you can find all these over at Dan Teaches Crypto. It's a 100% website, it's free, always will be free. And I made that because I want to give everybody as much information as they possibly can and go from there. And that's it for today. So look, I know that was a little bit longer, but I think just like we talked about, if we can have a plan of action and we can stick with that plan, just like the story that we saw in the very beginning, whatever that plan is, you made that plan during its sanest moment. So don't get swept up into the FOMO. Don't get swept up into the fear and the greed and everything else. Set your plan. Set your course, your compass, and go in that direction. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, and give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. We talk about mostly uh, news every day, but then sometimes we do videos like this to, to benefit us moving forward. And that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.